exhaust systems go. Clear for lift off. What's up, everyone? Tyler Tambolin here, a.k.a. Toe Tag and Tambo, back for another edition of the Monday First Look Show here on the Ship It Nation YouTube station. Back with my guy, Hoop. I'm excited. We're back. I had my little vacation. He had his little getaway. Now we're back. Get ready to get down to it. So we'll talk all things Valero Texas Open, and we will talk PGA. But before we talk PGA, I do want to talk a little free GA. And Hoop, I'll bring you in on this, man. We thought about this. Good week, right? Right before the Masters, there's a little bit of Masters prep going on for some of these golfers. We'll talk about Rory McIlroy and the pricing and breaking it all down, but they're out getting their prep on the golf course. If you guys want to get your prep, you can go to Ship It Nation. This is a first first of time offer. We've never done this before. I don't know many others that do this that, that are out there, but free GA, I coined it. You know, I had to get the tamboism on it, but it's a free week of our PGA only product. So it's everything that you know and expect. You don't get the Discord, same as what we normally have with our with our monthly, but it's a chance to check it out. It will expire Tuesday at 8 p.m. Eastern. So when Hoop and I are back Wednesday doing the final show here on the station, 2.30 Eastern, whoever it's going to be, that's not going to be available. So if you want to get in, it's simple. You click this link. It takes you over here to PGA Weekly. You scroll down. You type in the code under coupon code, and you're good to go to check out a week of the PGA content, the projections, ownership, the stone, Course fit in the tier rankings, the core and value reports, player pool slate plans, the showdown content all weekend, and the education course. You can check that out on the site as well. Hoopster, bring you back in, man. What's going on, my friend? How you doing? Happy to be back. You know, obviously uh, on vacation last week, and uh, you know we're full force moving forward uh, from here on out. The majors coming up, a very exciting time. Uh, MLB just launched. Uh, you know, some big UFC events coming up, and, and we have you covered for all that. But we wanted to give. Uh, some of our listeners who are not members, which obviously we want all you guys to eventually be members, but uh, we want to give people an opportunity to try us out for free. So PGA free is the code and you can get access to our content uh, for the entire week for free. Just get in there, hit that code. And uh, obviously we think you're going to love it and, and hang around. Hopefully you find success with our content. We're confident that you will. Um, but a good opportunity to, to give us a chance for zero dollars. And, um, you know, we talked about it for a little while. And like Tampa said, not a lot of people out there doing it. Uh, so we wanted to do it and, and give, uh, you know, a lot of people on the YouTube are not necessarily members. We wanted to give you guys a chance to, to try it out for free. So get on over, shipitnation.com, select that PGA weekly package, type in uh, PGA free, and you're good to go. Yeah, shout out to some of these guys here, Benet. Our guy, Kevin, it was awesome to see his daughter, Olivia, talk on there and say good luck to the big guy. Big guy obviously put out yeah. his health update last week. We're all thinking of James. If you guys haven't seen it, you can go over to his uh, X account at the Degenerate 75 and check that out. But a big week for Kevin last week was awesome to see. But I saw first in was our guy, B-Walt, here. He's in. He's not only giving away two PGA monthly memberships, which will work out this week. We'll probably give those away on Wednesday. So check back there. He's going to give away two monthly. That'll get you in the Discord. That'll include the Masters and a couple, I believe, signature events as well. But it was right here. So a uh, $4,000 shipper in the main tournament that uh, our guy, the big guys, baby, the $10 18 max. He shipped that for 4 k Got another. I think this is his maybe third ma uh, Masters Millie ticket. So congrats to him. Just great stuff there. Lots of good uh, lineups out there that we saw. GBS, Gordon Bombay Sports, uh, Alex. Had a great lineup. I was disappointed in myself. I didn't have this one hoop. This was the of my tier rankings, which is 10 guys. This was five of them, and you landed on Akshay, and I had Akshay and switched him to somebody else. So somehow I did not end up on that lineup, but you can see he absolutely crushed the field there. Nice to see those logos up top. We, again, have the logo contest coming up, but lots of good things going on at the nation. Like Hoop said, you've got the Masters coming up. You've got UFC 300. You've got baseball back. You've got a lot of different things going on. So check us out there. Go to the site and we'll get into it. Hoop, anything else you want to talk about before we get into the slate, breaking down the Valero? No, uh, good time to get in. Obviously, you know, football has ended, but man, we have so much going on. The PGA, P this includes PGA Showdown too. I'm not even sure if we mentioned that. All our, our Showdown content as well, you can yeah. access uh, for free. We have um, MLB, you know, full swing now. I mean, once MLB starts, it just goes, goes, goes. We have content 
obviously for MLB projections, ownership, all that you need. UFC, like we talked about, big event, UFC 300 is coming up right around the corner. And, you know, our, our pricing, like we talk about a lot, is just industry low for what you get. It's, it's an amazing value when you start comparing it to some of these other sites. Every single site comes out with their pricing for their new sports or whatever sports they're offering for baseball season. The average price, if you go around the industry, probably somewhere between $450 and $650 for their season-long package. At Ship It Nation, you can get all our content, all our content, Every sport, all the main sports on DraftKings, this covers all the main sports with the big prize pools for the $5.99 price tag, eventually going up to $6.99 as well. Um, so, you know, we haven't got there yet, but it's going to go up. It's all you need, man. Every single sport, projection, ownerships, uh, player pools, core reports, uh, rankings. I mean, everything you need for the price of what other sites are charging per sport. Yeah, just real quick, because you did mention that our annual, if, for those that don't know, we are coming up on our one year anniversary. So May 15th was when we launched the site last year. We talked about it already. So at the end of April, you have another month, the code hoop15 or dgen15 or whatever code you guys want to use still works to get 15% off and lock it in for 509. But just to note, this, this 699 has been up there since day one. We've never went there. We already said it a couple months back when we got everything rolling that this will be going to 699 and stopping, but that'll be the price for all of this content that you know and expect and the extras that we add with it. I'll show more on that in one second, but that 509 will go away on April 30th. So still lots of time on that, but we're just giving you the heads up now like we always do, keeping it simple. That puts it down to around 42 bucks a month. Even if you only use, some say, oh, I only need two sports. Well, right now for baseball and for golf, even if you get the 15% off, you're paying $66 a month for two sports. It's just a key. Like you can already get, the annual, or sorry, the monthly for $58 a month and still have all the sports. We've priced it so that if you need something extra, another data site, an optimizer, whatever else it might be, our price is right based around that. And then within our own stuff, what if you just decide to take on, oh, but I don't know anything about baseball. Okay, go take our two-hour education course on baseball, start to learn it, and then dive into the Discord, ask the right questions, follow bankroll management, contest selection, and all of that. And you'll be good to go. Go ahead there, Hoop. I saw you had one popped up. Uh, it was definitely littered for sure. I saw that actually yeah. at Ross with the logos big time yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. For, for showdown all over all over the boards and basically every contest over on DraftKings. So you lo love to see that. Yeah, and just all the stuff too, like the, the PGA stuff, since we're under our 10-minute marketing window here that people always give us, but the stone for the main slate last week, like just to go back into something like that, if those that you haven't seen, it's all in one place. You can obviously open this up, but your tee times, your projections, your ownership, your weather, course forecast, everything that you want in one place. And then if I just go back for a second, I want to show this, talk about, you know, continuing to improve and add on. Maybe people didn't see it, but MMA, we always talk about this, you know, not enough people know about it. Other sites now have MMA only products. It's just something that else is that's included with ours, but we did add and make it official last week, the stone for MMA. So you can download, it's best viewed on desktop, but you can download the PDF or whatever if you're on your phone. It got all the same stuff that Title puts into his slate plan. And if you want the write-ups, you go to the slate plan. If you want the breakdowns, it's all here. The price, ownership, projection, the point per dollar, uh, the fight rankings, which Marley does for us. He has a tiered ranking system by star ranking and a fight ranking. That's right on one sheet, the weight, the height, the record, all in one easy place to use. So basically like a cheat sheet, the stone is, that you can go and see, but that just got added. And it's just another added bonus that you get for joining up to the site. So last time, but go back to it. If you want to try out PGA for a week, it's free GA week, no strings attached. You can cancel it, whatever. You can sign up and then cancel. It doesn't matter. There'll be there'll be other offers that come with it, but you'll want to get in now while it's free to check out, get access to all the PGA content for this week. Hoop, let's dive in, talk a little Bolero. I will say some conversation around last week because we had another event in Texas. We're not going to recap it, but Scotty, Missed the short putt late. He missed a short one on Friday. Fina missed a short putt that would have got him into a playoff eventually and all that stuff. But like the wind in Texas and the waves, I'm not sure if you saw this, but last week, I think it was 10 of 13 that finished in the top 13 started in the AM PM. So I think wave stacking, it, just my forte, and you know what I like doing anyway, is always a thing at these tournaments. But yeah, lots of different things to discuss. We do not have Scotty Scheffler at this one. We got Rory up at the top. Give me your first grand scheme overview for the first look for this week. 
Yeah, and you know, Rory at the top versus Scotty is uh, quite the difference because I mean, you look at Rory what he's done recently. I mean, it hasn't been great, and you know, people look at this: oh, nineteenth, twenty-one, twenty-first, twenty-fourth. Like, man, like you need more than that. And I'm not one of those people that says, oh, if they're priced in this range, you have to finish there. But you need to see some win upside um, in a guy to really feel comfortable paying the the twelve three. Uh, I'm not saying like I'll, I'll fade Rory, but man, like these were events where, you know, solid fields and he just, man, I don't know, something, it's just not all there. And maybe the statistics uh, paint a more clear picture of what's going on, but he started out super hot, uh, I believe at the last event, what did he shoot? He shot, yeah, 65 in the opener and then follows it right up with like a 73. There's like no consistency. Um I'm sure he's going to be popular this week, but I think it's interesting to see him $1,700 more expensive than, than the next guy in the field, um, which is Hideki Matsuyama. So I don't know. I, I, I got to look into Rory a little bit more, but his game just does not seem right to me at this point. Um, Hideki, 10-6. My initial thought is people don't want to pay 10-6 for Hideki. So I think there's a chance he might be not necessarily low owned, but uh, you know, low ish owned. And he's been playing well sixth at the players, 12th at the Arnold Palmer. And he won the Genesis all solid fields. Now it gets somewhat of a weaker field here. Um, I think it's interesting. I, I don't think a lot will go to him. If people decide between him and Obear, I think they go to Obear. I mean, he's, Got an ownership basically all season long, you know, uh, Ludwig Obert. Uh, 10-5, though, is a big boy price tag for him as well. But I think if people are deciding between Hideki and Obert, they, they probably end up going Obert. And then Morikawa at 10-1, um, it just hasn't been good for him. They're just, I, I can't remember the last time where you needed Colin Morikawa to win a DFS contest. And at, at 10-1, I want some win upside. I just don't see it from him. So, um a lot of question marks, I think, in this, this top range. Um, but my initial read, I, I think, you know, Hideki might be the lowest owned up here. Potentially people love playing Morikawa. People love playing Obear. And then people are just going to be on Rory because it, it's Rory. So uh, Hideki is a name that kind of stands out to me in this uh, 10K range. Yeah, Hideki's coming in off, obviously, at his win. And then he got a uh, 12th with a 6th. And just to note, 15th here last year. But one thing that's interesting to note, I'm going to, get a segue in with the 9K range and up because it kind of starts here just to show this off. But the what you were trying to say, so Alex, by the way, congrats to Alex. He hopped on the, the show Wednesday last week. Thanks to everybody that filled in last week. But Alex hopped in on Wednesday and he said, you know, him and I had a really good conversation, I think around the Scotty Scheffler and does he need to win at that price tag conversation? Like you just said, we know that's not true. It depends what other people around him do, so on and so forth. Of course, he finishes second. It was right there. So it's like it didn't really showcase it. He was going to be needed either way with all that scoring. And the But again, the other guys did nothing around him. So it would just show you that Scotty could have came like 10th and still potentially been in some of those lineups just the way it shook out. But I digress. I just want to show it off here. Your point you're making with Rory is that with the 24th, 21st, 21st, and 19th, you're not going to worry as much. Like you know and others know that that's not really cutting it for it. It makes it an easier cut from your player pool. We're not going to see Rory pushing 50% like we saw Scotty last week, for example, whatever, right? You're you're saying it more so from that perspective. People are going to easily talk themselves out of Rory, and then they're going to talk themselves out of some of these other guys, I think, because this was my point. Spieth, obviously, uh, you has one here, Texas. Uh, Connors, winner here two times. And then you got Benny Ann, who also has been pretty good here, sixth and seventh in two of his last three tries. People are talking about him already. You can easily see people starting a lineup with this and still having 73. And uh, I forget what I was going to compare it to earlier. Oh, it's like the, I know what it was, a casino reference. You know when the dealer's got the, the card and they got to check that they have blackjack? You do a little, oh, okay, 5K range <laughs> is there. 5K is range there? There. We, we can still play. No peak? blackjack, but we, we, know that we know what we have underneath the card here. So we, we're good. We'll keep going around the table and doing the discussion. But just to say it, I do see people starting with at least two of these guys. Because it just makes sense. Who wants Kawa? Who wants that? Now, the chat already got onto it here. I think it was Nick. Um, what did he say here? Yeah, right here. Simple way to put it. Chalky AF. You're going to see it? Definitely think LA, Mr. Iceberg, is going to be chalky. But I want to get your take on this, Hoop, and then you can segue it into the top range. Is Okay, Connors wins last year. Rory, Ludwig, Spieth, Morikawa, Homa, Fitz, Harmon, Fleetwood, Horschel. Maybe I'll stop there. All not here last year. When, when Corey Connors yeah. goes out and wins. The year Spieth won it, two years ago. No Rory, no Ludwig, no Morikawa, no 
uh, no Homa, no Fitzpatrick, no Harmon, no Fleetwood, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Like th that's the thing. This field is not strong, but it's stronger for the Valero Texas Open than what yeah. we've seen in the past. So how do you take that into consideration and then do a more deep dive? Now we'll go nine k and up. Let's go Benny Ann up to Rory. You've already talked through some of it. Yeah, I mean, you got to you kind of got to give a, a little downgrade to maybe course history because this is a stronger field than we've typically seen in this event. Usually this is, you know, a complete shit fest. I mean, all the crappy dudes. Now there's some names here. So maybe, you know, not as much of an emphasis on uh, course history. I mean, there's more question marks when you start coming down here. I mean, you got Homa, who just has not played great this year. Uh, Fitzpatrick, who's been kind of boomer bust lately. It's like top 20 or missed cut. Um, you have Spieth, who definitely hasn't been playing well, despite having solid course history. Corey Connors, I think, is the guy that people come to here. Like you said, he's won, and he's playing well. And, you know, early on in the season, uh, the results weren't great. You know, 30, some 30-place 30 finishes, some upper 20s, 40. But recently, you're looking at 18 at the Arnold Palmer and 13th uh, at the players. So Corey Connors, I think, is a guy that a lot of people gravitate to uh, in this range, Fleetwood always gets ownership. Um, and then Benny on, we haven't seen him since when, since the uh, players where he missed the cut. So I don't know, a lot of question marks in this range. My initial read on this range though, is I think people definitely go to Connors. Uh, and then Fleetwood's a name that people always like clicking at, uh, at 92, but, uh, you know, I don't know what people are going to do with Homa, Spieth, Fitzpatrick, Benny on question marks there. But Connors, I think, is the guy that people gravitate towards. And then Fleetwood just kind of always gets some ownership. Yeah, and I will say this popped up. Dylan mentioned I already cheated on this one because it was, <laughs> you know, first in. You got to get to that when you see it pop up, post it on X for everybody. But I was pretty sure this is what they were going to do. It's, remember, a, a much smaller field each year at Augusta National Golf Club for the Masters. And so um, I didn't think you could see like Rory, I mean, sorry, like Scotty 13-5 and a 5K range. I, I figured this is what would happen. And also remember, they have to make it as soft as possible on the pricing to fill out a $10 millimaker with 495,000 people or whatever it is that are going to be in it. So um, definitely think that's something to talk about there. And then one thing I wanted to see here, it was talked about too. Blah, blah, blah. I just saw one more. Oh, how much do you care about the masters with those narratives? Like going in a week ahead, all that stuff. Do you, do you play around with any of these things when you're building stuff out who? Yeah, it's just too hard. I mean, I, I don't know like what you could possibly look at to, to have the answer on that sort of question. I mean, yeah, you know, the, the one thing would be if a, a guy is, you know, borderline, a, a big name that's playing in the Masters is borderline to, to make the cut, but not really in contention at this event. Do they just pack it in and say, I'll just, you know, miss the cut and, and move on to the Masters? Like, you're really it's really hard to, to pinpoint where any sort of advantage would, would come from with that sort of like mindset and, you know, talking point. Yeah, we've seen it plenty of times in the past too, like the Spieth year. A lot of people talk about that, and then he goes on to win it. Um, I don't know if he's even here. Uh, I didn't even look yet, actually. Just one sec. I'll look ahead. Uh, Fowler. It was one of the years, either he came 17th or 10th or something. I was like, oh, he's not going to do good because he probably wants to get to the Masters or something like yeah. that. It's like, no, he's going to try and win this tournament that he's in involved in yeah. right now. So yeah. uh, that's what people forget. It's so hard to win. Look at uh, Steven Yeager yesterday. Congrats to my boy, Yeager Bums, by the way. Finally. Gets the job done. Can't do it. It's tough when you don't close on the putt, but it's got to feel good being like, all right, I just got to fade. It, it sucks in the moment. I got to fade Scotty Scheffler making this putt, but knowing that he could miss it and then you win and then watching Scotty yeah, push that one past. It's like it was good for, yeah, it was clearly good for every uh, P PGA betting top because apparently everybody knew that Jaeger was going to win at 50 to one on, on Twitter, despite the fact that barely any of them could back it up with a winning ticket. Just shocking how that works. It, nothing shocking. tilts you more that uh, oh, people just, betting. It is. Oh, the betting tout stuff is just unreal. Like it, it just, especially with the golf thing. Cause they all post like all these picks, like 12, 12 to 15 different bets. And then when it hits, they're, they're taking the victory lap, but where's the ticket to show that they actually won any freaking money with the bet. It drives me up a wall. Yeah. I know our guy Nick, he shows the winning tickets off. He's yeah, got all kinds of winners, exactly. first round leaders and outrights and who knows yeah. what. But uh shout Absolutely. out to Nick. He's been just crushing it this season on those. But yeah, you're it's right. They didn't bet it. It's either they didn't bet it or they bet such a small amount that it's embarrassing to post. It's one of those We're not the names days. people either, but I will say, like no, it, 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 when people say that, there's no, nothing that applies more to the masses than that. 
And I'm not even hating. I, I, to each their own. I'm saying, like, whatever you want to do, go ahead. It always – certain things tilt who more than me and then vice versa. But <laughs> it, you, you don't need to put a name. It's like with golf betting. There's, a, like, golf betting – what's that, um, like, the tips tracker? The guy that posts out? There's, like, 50 to 100 people that do it, and almost yeah. none of them ever post the tickets. It's, like, the, the rare one. Shout out to uh, – you talk about, like, uh, other guys like Kirshner posted his yesterday. He put his 50 bucks. He won 1900 It is what yeah. it is. You bet what you can put. And you win what you win. That's but still showing it off. Love to see that. I think it was his first win of the season, so he was happy to get it. But it's it's tough out in these betting streets, man. So I, I hear where you're coming from. Um, going back to this, I do think that that's going to change it up a little. But that's what's going to make it interesting come Wednesday evening. Is like, is it going to be Connors and Ann chalk? And I don't even know if you can get Lud. Yeah, you can easily still get Ludwig in there. And if it looks like something like that, how do you not get it? I mean, whatever the ownership ends up being, it'll be kept in check to guys like Hideki. Recently won and has been playing better. Max Homa can play well enough. Fitzpatrick, speed. Like I, some of these guys just have to be good plays when we get there. So as a first look perspective, to me, it's that Rory just won't be the number that we saw in Scotty Scheffler. People just aren't going to be as comfortable with those 24s, 21st, 21st, 19th, and then missed cut here in 2022, getting prepped for the Masters. He's just coming out. That's going to be the sort of prevailing narrative. Now, because we have that pricing with the 5K range, I'm sure – and that's what it was. Yeah, golf tips tracker. Post them all. Yeah, that, that's the one. Um, you're going to see that people will still get to Rory Hoop. It's just not going to be the levels of what we saw other people get to with Scotty Scheffler, yeah. right? He'll still have big ownership, I think, just because this, you know, this they're going to take either. Oh, sorry to cut you off, but this isn't the take yeah. either. No one's unit shaming. That's what I just said. Someone bets 50 bucks. That's their bet. That's their bet. It's not that. Yeah. There's nothing. Show the 25 cent ticket then. Like, I, I that's the piece. Hoop is saying yeah. they're betting and saying they hit the winner. And then not showing they hit the winner. Like, yeah. you know, if I yeah. go, if I yeah. went on and said, bang, won the big pitch and putt on DraftKings this Correct. week. Correct. That's the proper analogy. They know you didn't. They'd say, I just went and saw that Sackalicious won this thing and you did not. And I'm the bad guy because what are you talking about? You didn't win. Yeah. So post yes. it. That's what they're yeah. saying. And you don't That's have to post That's the proper everything. analogy. But typically, same thing goes for, for DFS players. Some don't post any screenshots and that's okay. Some like to celebrate it. That's okay too. I have no problem with either of them, but it's more of the setup of that when you're running out and saying that you're a golf betting touts person pick, making these picks, typically you're going to show off that ticket to say you actually had it. Otherwise, yes. you can just say it every week. You can say, oh, I had the winner this week, or oh, I found this guy <laughs> uh, yes. in, in game. I found this. I found yeah. that. Who cares? I'm just saying that's yeah. what we meant. It doesn't matter. Uh, same, same with people at our site. There's people that turn 50 bucks into 500, and sometimes they say, man, I really wish I would have had that lineup in this tournament that paid 10 grand. But we tell them like your 50 bucks to 500 is a phenomenal return yeah. on, inv on investment. Yeah. It, you know, the same person putting a hundred bucks into X or a thousand bucks into X. Like it's the same what you're putting in and you shouldn't be going outside of your stuff. So it's not about the units. Hoop is more concerned and saying what they're saying they yeah, hit everything. and again it's not a huge thing it's just a petty little thing there's not much that you know really gets him in typically a, a happy guy keep to myself type of guy but that 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 sort of thing really starts to uh, irritate me because as soon as the golf tournament's over and if you're on twitter they all start hitting oh yeah got the got the outright and reposting what they posted earlier in the week they they hit it they hit it perfect analogy if i say i, I won the millie maker uh, at the Masters la last year, but don't post the screenshot to back it up. Anyone can go there and say, who, you did not win the Millie Maker last year at the Masters, but you can't back up the fact of someone saying that they won an outright bet if they don't post it. It's not a pub not public information, but whatever. It's not a huge deal. It's just yeah. uh, super annoying. All right, let's go to this uh, AK range. Really? AK range? Yeah, Rick, so. Rick uh, up to Billy Horschel. It's got Norrin, Harmon, Adam Scott, English, Henley, Tom Kim. There's a, some names in the mix here still yeah. that you can see find their way through. It's just, man, these these ranges are so small now because uh, when we haven't got down to the 5K range, which is there, but I have to imagine they're doing the same thing in these weaker field events where a large majority of the field just automatically goes to the 5K range. Um, you know, this is where I started having problems with, with the price tags a little bit, like Billy Horschel at 8,900. Like I never played Billy Horschel and I'm sure as hell – not playing Billy Billy Horschel at eighty nine hundred dollars, like that's a definite pass for me. Uh, Alex Norin been playing well lately, ninth, nineteenth, eleventh, but man, eighty seven. Do I really want to pay the eighty seven for Horschel? Um, I don't know. I, I think I just prefer some of these guys in the lower AK range. I'd be fine with Harmon. 
Um, Adam Scott at 85. Um, I don't know. I haven't really liked what I've seen out of Adam Scott. Like I could, I could be fine, like passing on him, but like Harris English, I'm definitely going to be in on, um, you know, Russell Henley potentially at 82. Uh, and then you come down, you know, Tom Kim, 8,100. I keep playing this guy and the results just can't, it just, it, they're just not there. Like he's been so, so bad. Um, had, what do you have an illness or something? I don't WD, know. Like, yeah. I was just going to say, yeah. remind everyone that he did WD yeah. last time. WD. Maybe that keeps the ownership in check a little bit just because, but yeah, I think that's, uh, yeah. that's the setup. And, and Steven real quick, we'll get to the five Ks, but did a, I think again, we did a really good job breaking this down last week. That is what sort of leaned us into getting heavier on Scotty on Wednesday was that there was more guys and it wasn't even the fives. We said like, you didn't, if you didn't go there, fine, but it was mainly, there was a lot of guys in the sixes last week that were very playable that then made it make even more sense where there's guys around uh, Scheffler that you could see failing. And there's a ton of guys in the six Ks to get unique enough outside of just landing in the seven K range where you could get different. And that sure enough is what ended up happening, whether you needed them or not in those big tournaments, like you say, it wasn't the case, but uh, in general, he still came second and had a chance to win it. So just a note there. Yeah. Yeah, overall, this is a tough range for me, to be honest with you. Like, I could see myself fading a, a majority of these guys. Harris English stands out as a very strong play. Like, he had a bad year last year. I think it was, like, injury-related. But he's bounced back very nicely this year, and he's in, he's in great form. So, you know, he's the standout play for me at 83. But the rest of these dudes, I could I could definitely fade Horschel, Norin, Scott, Henley, Kim, Fowler. I'm going to be very underweight, if not fading a lot of these guys in this range. Okay, one quick note, too. This is another thing, because last week, this is what I talked about. Funny enough, it ended up being Jaeger, my boy, from there. But, um, like, Jaeger, Rye, Hostler. And I'm not saying how each one of them did. I'm just saying the point of that range, everyone was overlooking them, and it ended up actually needing to be, um, you know, or, like, in a lot of the higher stake stuff, at least, you saw a lot of Scotty Jaegers for good reason. And that just made sense. So it's like that was a range that was overlooked. Here this week, it's – I'm wondering if it ends up that way because people will say, like, you know, if they're getting – and Fleetwood, Connor, Spieth, some of those guys you mentioned, Hoop, they'll feel better. Even if moving off like a, a Ludwig, they can drop down to one of these guys or go up to one of those two. You could see where this goes a little bit overlooked again. And I think like Norris. Yeah, it probably, probably would probably be low on. Yeah, I think I honestly do think. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah. If you if and, you like well, some no, of these guys, still, you're going to get them they, at low ownership. I, I think they still came in like 9 to 12% some of them. Yeah. But that was like talking about being kept in check, like literally less than 10% in some cases. So that's what I would note here. Adam Scott in a weaker field. Sometimes I don't mind him. So there's definitely guys that you can go to in this range. And Nick brought it up here too. I think that's a good one too. Is like someone tells you that Jaeger is going to do good in DFS, but then they play none of him. It's kind of the same thing. Cause what the betters will say is, but my card came out before the tournament started and I did call him to win with my small card. The point is more is like, it's, it's what gets tricky is people selling their stuff. Because then it's like the setup of you don't actually know if that is just their card. And even if they did call it right, you don't know if that actually makes them profit on the week. How much in-game betting did they do? Did they do ads over the weekend? Did they do other stuff that went with it? You just don't get the general sense of it. So just a, you know one note there as well. But I don't have much else here in this 8K range. Shoot. Let's go Bez down to, I don't know, how many is it this week? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 16, 16. Looks like 18 or 19 again, something like that. So yeah, Bez down to... McCarthy real quick what's your uh, first sense in this range yeah a lot more interest you know initially here uh, Bez kind of looks underpriced to me at 79 he's been playing solid solid golf um I've been on him I think he's a fine option at like 79 Batia uh coming off the solid week and back to back I mean it seems that he's kind of a boomer bust type player now it's like miscut or top 20 for uh for Akshay in 7700 I'll take my chances there uh, Eric Cole, 76, Keith Mitchell, Hostler, Denny McCarthy, uh, McNeely, and then the most important guy in the field at 7,400. Uh, and our guy, he's, he's been pretty good. Uh, our guy, Ryan, he hasn't brought it up yet, but Van Royen, 7,400, uh, has to be a lock button play this week. Mis most mispriced guy in the field for sure. Uh, coming off that miscut at the players, but you know, all jokes aside, 74, he's had some success this year. Don't necessarily hate it. Uh, Austin Eckrote, I think it's a fine option. And then Mark Hubbard at 7K, uh, you know you know what I'm doing there. So I don't know. To me, this range is way more appealing than the 8K range, cheaper than the 8K range. And I don't know. I think there might be you know more upside down here 
uh, as well. Uh, Mav McNeely, I don't know if I mentioned him. I'm always in, in on Mav, kind of at a down, down event last week, but you know, good to go back to him. So um, for me, just initial thoughts, um, I like this range uh, a lot more than the AK range. Yeah, I think I think many will, and for good reason. Like you said, some of the guys in here, the Keith Mitchells of the world, Eric Coles, Akshay, Bez, Rye. Like a lot of these guys were just in the mix. Rye just came seventh. He's seventy eight hundred. What did Akshay end up finishing? I know he just missed because I had a top eight each way, eleventh. Uh, like right? Yeah. He he finished there. Eric Cole has been off and on lately, but he did still mix in the thirty third and the twenty first. Like people are going to be okay with some of these guys. Keith Mitchell missed the cup, but before that, seventeenth. Um, Hostler not good over the weekend. McCarthy. So, so, but some history, like, yeah, I think this range is definitely going to be where people go to. So um, back to those builds that I talked about earlier is even if you're like a, um, if we say it's going to be Ludwig and it's going to be Connors and Ann, you still have 7K. So you're landing somewhere in here with a couple guys and we'll see what those 6Ks look like in a second. We'll do the bottom sevens in a second. But even if you take him out and go to... Who we say earlier might get the ownership. Let's say it's uh, Speed. Well, now you're right in this range, right? So you're in the heart of it. Who are some of the guys at the bottom? Like you talked about EBR, but what about like Todd, Victor Perez, Ryder, your boy Hubbard, any of those guys that you have interest in early? Yeah, definitely Hubbard, Acro, uh, Putnam could be on him. Um, Lucas Glover at 73. Like a lot of guys that I, that I could potentially play here in the 7K range. I think it's... Uh, solid range. Uh, I think there's ups, there's safety and upside in a lot of these guys. Yeah, and just one note, I think then to add, that's where I'll sort of fit in without, I'll get into more with Kenny tonight on the Fantasy Golf Degenerates, but just to say it, like, Rory leaves you this 7,500 range. You like the 75s, so maybe you'll want to have a little Rory in your pool because you can just get the guys you like with Rory pretty easily. But if you want to get different with it, like you said, you're you are able to build with three or four of these guys and then just pick your spots above and not have to go to Rory if you're not feeling him this week or you're not liking what he's he's there for. So um, I could definitely see that too, Hoop, because even you usually in on guys like Sam Hub or, or sorry, um, Mark Hubbard or the guys that we'll get to in the six Ks. I see some in a minute. So you will be able to get up to Rory if you want, but just remember that if you are down here, there's nothing saying you have to go to Rory just because you can afford him. There's lots of other ways that you can build without him. So I definitely think that's an interesting note to add in there as well. Nothing else really. Stands out heavy for me here. So just more of roster construction thoughts early on. But give me your take in this 6K range. Hoop, we'll dive in. Looks like a much more play. It looks like last week. It's a much more playable 6K range than the week previous to last and some of the others when they first started introducing this pricing. It definitely opened up the 6K range a little bit more where there is guys in this range that people like playing. Yeah, there's definitely guys in the 6K range, and I have a feeling, you know, there's going to be a big difference between some of these 6K guys and the 5K guys that we talk about next. Again, a large majority of this field is priced in the 6 and 5K range, but just that initial glance here in the 6K range, I think there's definitely playable guys and guys I feel pretty pretty darn comfortable with, um, you know. Doug Gim was on an absolute heater in, in, until he wasn't. And he went, what, 67th missed cut. Now he's $6,900 in a weak field event. Like if he kept that heater going, he would have been an 8K guy. Now he's basically $2,000 cheaper. Um, I'm fine giving him another chance. Adam Shank, I always kind of play. Um, Lee Hodges is a guy I've been, been on a lot, and the results have been solid. 12th, 35th, 26th, two of those results. I mean, 12th at Arnold Palmer, strong field. Uh, 35th at the players, very, very strong field. Um, I think Hodges is a really good play. Davis Thompson, uh, Ben Griffin, uh, Rio Hissasune, if that's how you pronounce his name. Definitely, I, that's just a guy I kind of always play. And, you know, he's he's had some solid finishes this year. 33rd at the Valspar, 18th in Puerto Rico is kind of shitty. But thir uh, 33rd at the Farmers, he was 11th at the American Express, uh, 6,600. Like, I'll definitely take some chances on him. In uh, in MME, um, Bug Collie, uh, 6,400. He's kind of coming around. Thornborg Ol Olison, remember the event? What do you, you probably know this off the top of your head? What event was it where he came in and he was like priced in the 10k range? He was like the third. I don't one. remember which event it was, but it wasn't that <laughs> long ago. He did not do well at that event, by yeah, the way. Yeah, he though. didn't do well. And now he's been like, now he's in like the, the sixth. I'm not saying I like him, but it's just uh, it's funny how, how time changed so quickly. Um, Schmidt at, at 63. Um, I mean, look at this. 10th at the Puerto Rico Open. Not, not a great event. 
26 at the players, 17th at the Valspar, and then 21st last week at $6,300, a guy in this sort of form. Uh, Svensson, uh, Toasty last week finished second. Will people go back to him? Um, man, Ryan Fox, so sad to see him down here. He was, like, competing in, like, uh, majors and shit. Now he's, what, $6,200 and sucks at all these crappy events? Tough times for him, but – it was just last year, I think, right? When he was like competing in like majors. I, I'm fairly certain. Like he was, he had a solid year last year. He's falling quickly. Um, Bramlett, you know, oh, Stanger, Mr. Stanger, 6K had in. the miscut at the Valspar. Yeah, definitely in on him. I mean, there's, there's definitely a lot of playable guys uh, in the 6K range. And, and honestly, guys, I feel pretty comfortable with. Did I mention Svensson? Because he's here too, 63. Not you sure did. That Lee Hodges yeah. is going to be popular. I'll bring that one up yeah, right now. Hodges Coming will in be, 12th, yeah. 35th, 26th, and finished 6th here last year. is only 6,700. So we already know he's going to be a popular play down there. Just, you know, leads to the certain types of builds that you mentioned. I, I will say this, Nick. I keep getting shit on for this one. People don't like this tank. I was going to I was gonna put that in there. That is – it is. Uh, I – I, I'm with Nick. Like the, for what I've had to watch, like I my boy Jager bombs. Awesome to see him get the job done last week. Anybody who's followed me for a long time knows how much I've talked about this guy and how long. I'll have that discussion with Kenny Kim tonight when he talked about on Twitter last night how oh no one would have saw this coming, but you kind of would have. And we had this exact conversation at the start of the season. No one wanted to give Jager credit for all those ninths and fourteenths and twelfths. It's like, dude, that's a few strokes away on any given day from being able to close. He was a closer on the Corn Ferry Tour. He, it took him 135 starts. He got one. Maybe that opens it up, but he's definitely been solid. And even the last couple times out, people shit on Jaeger for like, oh, you're going to keep playing that guy? You know, he's like, it, you know, it's it's going to it's gonna regress. It's going to regress. Everyone does at some point, but it didn't, and he ends up going on to win. So congrats to him. But just other than that, I don't care what anyone says. Those courses were set up awesome the last two weeks. Some people like it for that reason. They say then it doesn't matter who's in the mix, that the golf is still good. I think of it the other way and say, really, would be so much better if we had better golfers. Because yeah. guess what? The courses would still be set up the same way. We would just get a much better leaderboard down the stretch. Again, people get mad about the take. and There's blah, too blah, many blah. guys in these events. I mean, I'll stick to it. I said it a couple weeks ago. I, I understand the fact that, you know, some of these guys wouldn't have the opportunity if it was smaller fields. But do you really need 156 golfers in the Valero Texas Open? And, and look at some of these names in here. It's just not – exciting stuff like i i fully support maybe they do like a minor league or something for pg i don't know whatever it is there's just too many guys and these names are just nasty man nasty it just depends what you like watching we know all the guys yeah. it's good for that but I've, I've literally had sweats going into sunday and still not been thrilled about it and been fine in the mornings to go about my day go to the gym still be with my family spend time do whatever and just catch the last nine holes like that's fine in, in some of these cases and you know Go from there. But, you know, it's not about being a true fan. I love golf. I'm excited for the Masters coming up in a week. So we'll be there. But I'm just saying, like, for, for watching it, for covering it, for all that, I won't be there. I wish I was. But to say we'll be around for all this stuff regardless. But everyone has their own opinion on it. That's just mine when it comes down to it. I don't think the golf's been exciting at all. And other the ratings say different. Oh, someone said, oh, but did you know it was St. Patty's Day? Yeah, my dad was up at the party drinking green beers. No, he's on the same couch with the same golf on like everybody else was. Ratings were just down. That's the facts. Yeah. Um, yeah. Real note, real quick note while we're there, if you guys didn't catch it off the top, free GA week. It's no, spe it's not April Fool's. There's no special rules. Go on right now. You can go into this on our X account at Ship It Nation. Click the link. It's for the weekly only, so it's all the content, projections, ownership. It includes showdown. It includes all of the stuff on the site. Projections and ownership for the main showdown. Projections ownership round one through four. The stone for showdown round uh, two through four. Slate plan for showdown two through four. Stone for the main slate. The core report value reports are going to be out. The player pool, the slate plan, the tier rankings, the course fit rankings, and the model rankings all included. You can get it all for free this week. The code PGA free, as you see there, will expire Tuesday night, tomorrow night at 8 p.m. Eastern when Hoop and I are back on Wednesday to do the show with all the updated ownership and weather and breakdown after all the other shows that I've done and everything Hoop's gone through on the site, all the content's up. We won't have this option to get in for this. It's meant to be so you can try it out for the Valero, not for the Masters. So uh, if you want and you like it, stick around for the Masters. We'll have a deal for you guys. But like Delbert says, 
the stone, especially for showdown, a lot of those logos, you can also see those on X where it was a huge weekend across the board for Ship It Nation members. Lots of logos up at the top of those leaderboards. Hoop, I don't have set names to rip out here, but just to say it, like you, you said a bunch, different course setup, of course, but just in general, there is definitely real names here, right? In these ranges, you mentioned a bunch of them, but even some of the guys that stepped up and played good last week, like some of these guys here that you, you see, they're in the mix on top of those. Uh, Kucher, people might bring up the course history, uh, third, second, 12th, and seventh here. The last four years, he did finish 49th last time out. So if you wanted to see something from him, there was that, but there's a lot of reasonable names for PGA DFS that people can use in here. I'm curious what your take is though. Once we get into this 5k range, we've got, uh, Eric Barnes, who I'm not sure if they'll have it up there yet. Yeah. T17. They do had a good week last week and then go down from there. Is there any guys mm -hmm in the 5k range that stand out. I thought Highsmith might add a hole in one too, but um, yeah, uh, there's, there's usable guys everywhere. Ryan Palmer in Texas skins was in the mix again. So what's your thoughts on this one? Uh, and the problem for me, like I, I like the 5k range in certain events, but in these weaker field events, it just becomes a spot where everyone just, just, fa I mean, no one is going to come down here because there's no reward up top. Like we don't have the Scotty Shuffler uh, this week. So all these guys are just like X button plays. Now maybe you find something, but you're going to need this, these guys to do something in the 5k range. It reminds me of a couple weeks ago. I can't remember what the, the field was where if you're playing these guys down here, it's not necessarily to get something up top. It's because you kind of like them or need them to do something. And I'm not seeing a ton. I think there's a pretty substantial drop off from 6K down to five, just going through some of these names. Like you mentioned, Highsmith, he's been solid in two out of the last three. Um, I don't know. Like the Troy Merritt's yeah, down here, Matthew Neesmith at 55. Um, these guys are all going to be like absolutely unknown. Like to me, the 5K range should provide you with some temptation to get something else. You can still get that something else without coming down here is the problem I have. Um, I'm not seeing a lot. I mean, we'll, we'll obviously, I'll dig in much deeper throughout the week and, and see what I can find. But initial glance for me is a large majority of these guys will, will be fades for me. I want to finish a lot of teams in the 6K range, if possible, and just not even mess with these dudes down here. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's pretty ugly, and I do think there's quite a drop-off from 6 coming down to five yeah badly with some course history at 59 i mean I, I just don't see at least right now i don't see many people standing out here that i could look at i just want to see um some of these guys with the rounds like palmer 5800 palmer in texas is always the thing people will talk about that i'm sure but again one thing of note for sure streelman also uh he has a 26 and a 32nd in two of his last three has some history here in the past as well so maybe people talk themselves into these plays but in general it hasn't really mattered like that. That's kind of the setup too, is like, you just haven't seen them be as involved. And then also, yeah. um, you know, just in general going down to this range, what does it do? Like if you go down and take your stand and Streelman is your guy, you have 8,800. It's probably not that hard to get to the guy that you actually want. If it's, you know, Schmidt, you, you still have 87 yeah. for it. Like, you know what I mean? It's not, you get what you want and go from there. So I definitely think that's the other way to look at it. Like you just haven't really, seen much down here and it hasn't been enough ownership to matter either like no. that's the other thing no one's getting to 10 percent really joel damon might have been the guy last week and i can't remember if it was the sixes or the fives but um it's rare to see these guys get the ownership anymore yeah it, it, these guys just all become a non-factor for for d well for the pga tournament and then like for dfs as well it's just like you're eliminating so many of these guys are just not going to be be a factor in, in DFS this week. And I just went through the list. There's just like nothing. I mean, maybe we find a couple that we like here throughout the week. But again, I mean, my main main point in this remains true. Just at, at first glance, after you know going through the rest of these guys, like the six K is substantially better. Six K range is substantially better than the five K range. Yeah, I agree. Andrew brings up a good point. Wind dependent since it's Texas, so we'll see how the wind looks. Obviously we go through on that throughout the week. We'll find out more when Mayo and I do the in-studio show on Wednesday. We always break that down and bring up the latest weather, talk through some of those stacks. If there is value to that in Texas, the wave stacks are valuable, whether there's weather wave stacks or not. We've seen it time and time again. Valero is actually where it's more common at than even last week, but last week just happened to work out that 10 of the top 13 were from that AM PM wave. So never have a problem with stacking that. Kevin, our guy, shout out to him again. Mentioned Masters pricing out too. Sheesh, soft. 
yeah, very yeah. soft. Uh, took out Always the six, took the 5K range and go from there. What What's our hope here, Hoop? We fade early Monday thoughts. We fade Corey Connors because it was course history with none of these people around him here. He does bad here. And then people finally don't play him at the Masters for once, and he always does good there. So we, we get it. Yeah, that he way. does like that... well, he does like really good at the Masters, right? Yeah, he just always comes through. He's like, people, you can't play Corey yeah. Connors at sixty six hundred. Like it's an eighty eight person field with nobody in it, a bunch of old dudes that aren't gonna. Like you kind of know what your setup's gonna be. It was like he's fine at that price, and yeah, he's gonna be popular this here. week. He's twenty two. He's twenty two to one to win on on DK. Same odds as like uh, Morikawa. Morikawa is also at 22 to one. So he's going to be very popular at 9,400 this week. Yeah. He's won it twice before. So he's going to win it a third time, right? That's how it works. Yeah. That's how it Always works. has to happen that way. So you got to remember that. To. But uh, yeah. I don't think uh, I have much else beyond that. Anything else that you want to talk about before we get out of here? I guess, uh, you know, the free week, get in. If you're someone that watches our shows and, you know, we, we definitely, you know, appreciate your support in, in the YouTube chat, you know, watching our shows, hitting the like button throughout. This is your opportunity to, to try try out our product uh, for free. So you get on over to shipitnation.com. That code PGA free gets you a free week leading up to the Masters. Uh, includes showdown content uh, as well. So I know there's a lot of people that, you know, just kind of watch the shows, which is great. And we appreciate that support. But now is your opportunity to, to get in and, and give the, the paid side uh, a whirl for free. Yeah. And Billy brings it up 10th, 8th, and 6th. Yeah. Not sure. Hoping this is not, uh, I mean, I hope this is an April Fool's joke. 7,500 is kind of a joke. I'm sure, for he's super cheap. Yeah, 75. Yeah. But it would make sense. It's what they do, man. So, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, that's it. I, I don't have much else to add. I think that's no. the key here with this one is to make sure we cover it, go over it. I can easily see some of the roster construction already. We'll have the rest of it all covered throughout the week. But you brought it up. If you guys do um, want to get in, like we said, go over, use the code PGA free. That's if you want to try out the free PGA week. We do recommend that. If you were looking to become a member and want some of the MLB stuff, you can still get in um, using for MLB only, MLB 15, and get 15% off that. If you want in on the all access, it's Hoop 15 to get it for 58 bucks. That's going to get you all the sports just under $2 a day, and you're covered completely. That's going to do it for this one, guys. For Hoop, for myself, Toe Tag, and Tambo, let's ship it.